It is another freezing cold day, and when temperatures drop this low, most of us car campers usually just roll up our windows, lock our doors, and assume everything is safe. But lately I've been worried that this cozy setup is actually toxic. So over the last week, I've been monitoring the air inside and the results are alarming to say the least. So today I'm putting this van through a 24 hour reality check. I'm gonna run through all the scenarios that we actually faced while car camping, from cooking inside to sleeping with the windows closed, idling the engine. I wanted to try this so that we can stop guessing and we can start sleeping better. And hey, if you have a tip that works well for you, please leave it in the comments. It might help someone out who is just starting car camping today. Otherwise, let's get started. And before we even consider boiling water to start my tea, I've been sitting in the van for just about 10 minutes and the carbon dioxide level has shot up from about 500 parts per million to over 2,300 parts per million, which 2,000 is about the limit of where you can start to get headaches and discomfort. Now, 5,000 is a really unsafe level. That's what they consider toxic. So we're definitely nowhere near a toxic level, but at just 2,400 parts per million, we're already starting to get into that range where long-term sitting here could cause a lack of concentration and other things like headaches, things like that. I just wanna make a plain cup of tea. And while I'm getting my stove ready to boil some water, I do wanna point out that I have a carbon monoxide detector right there. That will be the most impacted by starting my stove. And then of course I have that other monitor that I showed you guys a few minutes ago. Real quick while my water boils, I wanted to talk about the air that I monitored last night with the minivan empty. So I was not sleeping in the minivan. I left the air things monitor in there all night long. And the one result that really kind of surprised me, which makes sense, is the VOC levels inside of the van are much higher than they are outside in the ambient air. So VOC stands for volatile organic compounds, and those are the off-gassing byproducts of all the things that I have in the minivan. Now this van is about 10 years old, and so some of that stuff is not a product of the vehicle itself, but things like my, my bed, my mattress, the things that I've put in here as part of my minivan camper setup. And the VOC level was around 370, which is not alarming, but it is higher than the ambient air. And so in the minivan camper, at a minimum, as a baseline, you at least have some volatile organic compounds, which could be detrimental in the long term. My water is almost about to boil. The carbon monoxide has not increased, which maybe that's a chemical byproduct is not carbon monoxide of this specific type of gas but I am watching and the CO2 level just hit 4,000. So once this water starts to boil, I'm gonna stop this test. I'm gonna open the windows and air out the van. While my tea finishes brewing, let's talk about the air quality in the van while I was cooking. The numbers that really alarmed us were that carbon dioxide went pretty high and then 965 parts per billion for the VOCs. Also a very high number. That's a result of just cooking in general. I sat the air things meter on the roof of the van. I'm letting things kind of zero back out. I wanna see what that ambient air really looks like. The humidity outside has already dropped about 10%. The CO2, 637, that is good. And that may also be decreasing as we speak, 579. Going over to the particulate matter, all of this stuff, in in my experience, is just gonna drop down to the minimum. The air outside, this baseline air outside, obviously is the healthiest air for you to breathe, but that is a pretty good result for this kind of air. Okay, so the cooking fumes are flushed out and the air here is back to normal. Now that the sun is out, I'm gonna seal the van up empty and let it bake for a few hours. I wanna see if the heat cooks 
even more chemicals out of the dashboard and upholstery. See you at sunset. The sun is down, so let's check the damage. The VOC levels started at 368 parts per billion this morning. And after sitting out here all day, a little bit of sun, not super hot, they settled at 279. So the minimal heat definitely doesn't play a factor unless of course it's boiling off the PCBs, which I don't think that even happens. So that solar test was a little bit of a surprise, but I wanna see over the next couple of hours while I'm just sitting in here, cozied up under my blankets, how much CO2 do I generate inside of the vehicle? And it's only been about 10 minutes since I started just hanging out in here, but I already got a little warning from the phone here saying, poor CO2 levels in Overland minivan, let fresh air in by opening a window for a little while. And we are currently, wow, we're currently already over 2000 parts per million. About three hours ago, I started this test and I've been sitting in here pretty much the whole time, except for about an hour in, I got outside of the van for just a quick minute there. But over the last three hours, it's gone from a very reasonable 527 parts per million up to, if you see here, it's really stagnating around 5,000 parts per million. So exactly where we don't want it to be. This really surprised me that the, the volatile organic compounds, I guess I'm emitting my own VOCs, and they've risen up to over 2000. <clears throat> I think I can feel it in my throat that I have this uh, <clears throat> kind of congested feeling. It's almost about 1030 right now. But what I wanted to do is go ahead and just run the vehicle a little bit, see how that impacts the air. Let me get that started. Now the van is gonna run for a few minutes. I'm gonna use the HVAC system. I'm gonna see if that HVAC system will help me clear some of this nastiness out of the air. After I've ran that for a little bit, I'll check back in. And then ultimately I am gonna just go ahead and crack the windows and actually go to sleep. So this is actually pretty shocking. I've had the van running for about 30 minutes now and the best way to describe it is the air inside is essentially purified. But one thing I still do not recommend, even though I know in, in the data here, like the, the carbon dioxide is perfect right now. The VOCs also rapidly went down. They're coming up probably a little bit because I'm moving, but I never, I would never recommend idling a vehicle while you're sleeping. It is bedtime and I am actually pretty tired. I want to get to sleep, see how this goes throughout the night. And I will see you guys in the morning with the final result. Good morning. I slept great last night. No headaches, no congestion. That graph stayed on the lower side of green for the most part. I got a little bit of particulate batter and that's just for me tossing and turning dusting up with my blankets. So is your minivan slowly poisoning you? Only if you keep it sealed up like a tomb. You've got to keep that glass cracked and ventilation isn't optional. If this video helped you out, remember to leave your tips in the comments. Let's help the next person get started with car camping. I'm Mario, this is Overland Minivan and I'll see you on the next adventure.